What about you? And this one here, yes, it's another bench test video. But, well, I'm looking at these magneto resistive wheel speed sensors, um, maybe in a wee bit more detail how they work and go into it in a wee bit more. do this wee bit outside because uh, it's a lovely day here in Northern Ireland. So to give this uh, wheel speed sensor its full name, it's an AMR wheel speed sensor, that's what it's known as, and that stands for Anisotropic Magneto Resistive. And so what does all that mean? So Anisotropic, uh, you have two different types of material, Anisotropic and Isotropic, you may have heard of Isotropic before, and you can see there we have the two different types of uh, materials there. We have an isotropic one there and an anisotropic one. So this here is a bit of metal. And uh, so this wee bit here. So an example of isotropic is metal or glass. And an example of anisotropic is wood. So what's the difference there? What are we talking about? So Anyway, what that, that all means is, if we look at the grains here, we can see the properties of this piece of wood there. So the grains are running up and down there. So what that means is that this wood is, if it gets a load in one direction, it'll be strong, but a load in a different direction, it'll be weak. So you can see the way the grains there are that way, and they're not across this way. Whereas if we look at this bit of metal, that bit of metal is the same. So if you apply a load here, or or here, or here, it, it doesn't matter. The properties remain the same. And there's a dog barking, just as I'm deciding to record. But hopefully uh, that's a, a very, very uh, simple way of thinking about this. Basically what it means is... The properties of this material here are different depending on what direction they're acted upon. So if we think about that in our uh, in electronics, uh, we'll have crystals, we have piezoelectric crystals that deform when currents apply to them and uh, integrated circuits that behave differently depending on current flow. So they would be in this anisotropic uh, range. So back on the bench, this is uh, a magnetic resistive sensor. It's out of a cheap Cherokee. It's a failed sensor, but it still works a wee bit. So we might get spurious results here, but it's still there's still activity there. So we can we can see something with it on the on the vantage. So if you're following the channel, uh, you'll see a few videos on ABS sensors and different types, and uh, there's a video on this. Jeep Cherokee that this sensor actually came out of. So what we have is uh, with our breakout leads and we have amps internal on the Vantage Pro with 12 volts coming out of our power supply. And uh, we have the, the ammeter is in series with the positive. So simple enough setup. And we are reading nine milliamps now, these sensors are documented to work between 7 and 14 milliamps, and uh, I, always re I always read 9, 9 to 16, I think it is, so it's a couple of milliamps more. Now, the reason for that, I've noticed, is if I disconnect this for a minute, I'm getting 2 milliamps here. Now, that's, well, that's induction of fluorescent lights or whatever, I don't know. So, the real uh, value is whatever you're seeing, minus 2. So it's 7 to 14, but this is reading 9 to 16 or 17. So this uh, AMR sensor, um, the properties inside changes. So the internal resistance changes. Uh, so there's no, no activity at the moment, but there's 9 milliamps, so there's 7 milliamps flowing at 9 milliamps red. So um, there's a, a magnet inside this. So we can see it holds the wee paper clip there. 
and uh, it acts on just an ordinary tone reel. And you can see the activity there when I take the metal away. So that's me disturbing that magnetic field in that sensor. And it makes the, uh, it changes the, the current flow. And that's what the ABS module is measuring. So here I have a tone ring and uh, we'll put that up against it quite close. And we'll see if we can get any activity there. So just spin it roughly in my hand. And we can see it fluctuating. So this isn't going to be very precise here. Uh, we're just seeing the fluctuations of the current. So it's very, very low, the amount of current we're measuring here. And uh, I'm just going to introduce a shunt resistor. And it's a wee bit like, uh, again, if you have watched the previous videos, uh, I showed this wee boy here where we measure across a resistor. Uh, that's for the, made that for the Hall Effect sensors and uh, I'm going to do the same here but really all I'm going to do is uh, it's, going to, it's going to allow us to measure this um, it's going to up the numbers and measure this a wee bit better and uh, what we'll be doing then is measuring the voltage across that resistor. So down the bottom of the screen here that is a 15 ohm resistor it's a 15 ohm 50 watt resistor doesn't really have to be 50 watts, it's just something I had that about. And uh, as you can see, the output there is 0.13 volts. So you imagine if it was 0.9 milliamps originally, and uh, <coughs> you multiply it by one and a half, basically, and move the decimal point. That's what we've ended up with. So if it was one milliamp, it should be about 15 volts, or 0.15 volts. And uh, so it's just slightly less than that. The numbers don't really matter here, but you, you get an idea of... Uh, what's going on. The, the mass does work out uh, more or less. So uh, this method here, the reason why I'm doing this is we can now measure voltage. So we can actually put this on a scope then and we can see this a wee bit better. So if we put our, offer our tone ring up to it here, that's it moving about there. All right, what I, what I have noticed as well is if I disturb the magnetic field with a magnet, uh, it's a greater effect. So let's see. The other thing is that's attracting, as you can see, it's moving about. And the other side, if we repel it, we'll have a similar effect. So it's basically could just disturbing the magnetic field that's uh, around this sensor here. So I'm doing that with another magnet. So the effect is is greater there than than the wee tone the wee tone ring. So I'll just see it even though we put a bit of metal on it. Is that yeah. Just a, a paper clip is disturbing it. So here we have our, our scope set up and uh, we can see a flat line in there at 115.4 millivolts. Probably can't read that, but that's what the dash line is there. And uh, if we offer up our tone ring, um, we'll try and get it to, to change. You gonna change now? Uh, there we go. Have to be quite close to it with that. Try and do it a bit quicker. Uh, there we are now. So, we'll just stop that. Go back a frame or two. There we go. Now you might think, that's a hall effect you've got there. That's like a signal from a hall effect, but it's not. It looks like a signal from a hall effect, but it isn't. And I'll show you the difference. So just a wee recap, the hall effect, uh, otherwise known as digital, some people call them active sensors. 
So what you'll have on the car is 12 volts in and you will have a voltage on the signal wire. Even with the wheel stationary, it'll be 0.8 to 1.4, maybe even up to 1.8. So whenever you spin the wheel and the tone ring acts on it, you get a square wave. And that, cha that changes with uh, the frequency changes depending on the, on the speed of the wheel. So that's how it measures it. So if you unplug it, if you unplug the Hall Effect one, you'll get 12 volts and your signal wire then will go to zero. So there is no signal. Okay, so our magneto resistive then, you get that with it plugged in on a good sensor, 12 volts plugged in and zero on uh, this one here, because this is a ground, it is not a signal. What happens is, uh, as we were saying, it works on current flow, so you will have, uh, there's your sensor, there's that, the 12 volt in, zero there, but the current flow is your uh, seven to 14 milliamps flowing in like that, but you will also see the seven to 14 milliamps flowing out. So what current goes in, also goes out. So that's uh, Kirchhoff's law there. So we'll have to remember, we're actually measuring current flow here. And I've put up a couple of markers there. And uh, so that's it with no activity. And that's it with the, the magnetic field being broken. So 115 millivolts, which is uh, what we saw on the Vantage. And the peaks there at 231. 0.6 millivolts. So what makes this different from the Hall effect is this. So as you can see there, uh, so there's nothing acting on the sensor here at all. And the current, uh, this voltage measurement, which is the current flow, is stuck on the, the, upper, uh, the, the upper number there, the, the higher number. So if we act upon it, it goes up and down. So there we go, act upon it with a magnet, just to make it do that, go up and down. But it's resting at the higher voltage this time. So if we disconnect it and let the windings uh, unsaturate, so that's it disconnected there. So there's, there's nothing, it's measuring sort of zero there. And we'll put it back again. That's the current flow. Uh, under its resting state. Uh, so it's back down to the, the 0.9 or 0.7 milliamps it would be. So if we act upon it again, if we disturb the magnetic field, you're gonna do it. It goes up to that state. So a whole effect is different. You, you, the output's in the signal wire and your, it goes between, I think it's 0.6 and 1.4, or 0.8 and 1.4, up and down. And uh, it won't stay on either one of these. So if you remember from the, the Jeep video, it actually depended on where the tone ring was sitting on the, on the sensor, to what the current flow actually was. So it could sit on the upper level, or it could sit on the, on the lower level depending on where the wheel is, where the tone ring actually is. So we'll offer this tone ring back up again. This tone ring isn't, isn't the one for this sensor. It's, it's not, the rings aren't actually wide enough. The segments aren't wide enough. So let's we'll see if we can get that to go again there. So that's it disturbing the magnetic field and it rests on the upper level. Let's we'll see if we can do it again. Rests on the upper level, but we'll go the, the other direction. It's still rest in the upper level. So let's have the wee magnet here. Let's see if we can get it. So it's at the lower level at the minute. And we'll just give that a... So that's it sitting at the upper level. And that's it at the lower level. So it just depends how quick I do that, I think. We'll have to remember this is a field sensor, so maybe... Uh, the magnetic field seems to be the resistance seems to be staying 
in the, in the one place whenever we change it. So the magnetic field it's being saturated and alters that current, which we're measuring as voltage. So, well, hopefully you got a wee bit more out of the, these magnetic resistive sensors and the way they work. And uh, there's another way of testing it there uh, on your scope if you put a shunt resistor on it. Um, the shunt resistor in this case is on the positive, the feed. That's we're measuring the current flow, uh, albeit it's across the resistor, so we're able to measure it in scope. And uh, that's the the big difference um, to the Hall effect. Uh, the waveform does appear very like a Hall effect, where it's simply going from the high high end to the low end. But uh, yeah. So many thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of this video. A wee bit more on uh, magneto resistive sensors, AMR sensors, as they're properly known. So thanks again. All the best. Bye bye.